everybody wants to be successful, and yet we all have different ideas of what that is. Finding success is the journey we embark upon to go and get what's ours. We are willing to travel down within to find our greatness buried deep inside of us. Questioning society's views and flipping the script, putting our own stamp on life. We're here because our future is within our control. Finding success is how we grab hold of what is possible. The relentless pursuit of success starts here. We are Finding Success. We are here to help you break that monotony of your life and help you with your version of success. Butson. Adam. How are we doing? Good, thank you. How are you? Very good, thank you. Very good. Before we get started in this episode, I just want to tell everyone that this is episode 20. And because this is episode 20, even though we passed episode 7 ages ago, we are in the top 95% of podcasts to pass episode 7. Woo! Exactly. Just a bit of information for everyone. So even though we are, we're plugging away, so guys, please help us out. Help us out. Go and review us. Go and follow us on Instagram. You know, we really appreciate it. And uh, we just want to thank everyone for listening. Let us know what you want to hear as well. DM us, message, email us. Let us know what you want more of, because it'll help us create some more content for you. Exactly, it will. We're we at the end of the day, you know, we created this to help people out, not only to cut and shut the fakes out there, but open people up to real people. You know, people that are on a journey, people that are in a journey, and we can give you tips and tricks on how not to choke and die and how to become good people. Exactly. So, Butson, this episode, keeping it simple, something a lot of people struggle with. Indeed. You see it all the time, didn't you? You in, do. In our day job, in so many ways, people overcomplicate things because they think it makes them look more intelligent. And what actually does is just mess up the old project. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever. It, it surprises me um, how way out of left field people take things to make themselves look better. Yeah. For instance, sticking stuff on the lids of stuff so you know where stuff goes. Even though you just have a nice little box and you can work out yourself, they go to that micromanagement stage of that. It just ama- it just amazes me how far people take it to try and one-up the person yes. that's maybe looking to take their job or maybe competing with them. Yeah, yeah. I and see it's very, you. very surprising to me. Very, very surprising to me. I don't understand why you take it that far. Yeah. Losing the sight of the end goal, you're just yeah, trying to one up someone else. Which is not depends on the situation, doesn't it? It does, yeah, completely. Because obviously completely. raising the bar is important. I think people should try and raise the bar. But there's raising the bar and then there's just doing that tat, like you said, putting you know, in our industry, putting names on boxes and so on and so forth. The, the waste of time things. Making difference. things over complicated to impress people. Exactly. Yeah, trying to impress people, trying to make yourself seem better at a job that you're probably not, especially if it's tatty stuff like that. Titivating, we exactly, called it at yeah. the previous team. Um, yeah, it's just a waste of time. You're wasting, yeah, you're wasting valuable time getting actual work. You could be using to get actual work done. So. Yeah, and keeping it simple and understanding for everyone makes everything a lot easier. So than what it does for that one person. Because even though the person, like you said, is not maybe looking just looking overall to impress or help, you know, um a certain procedure or way you do things, um, maybe, you know, maybe the way that they're taking it too far and they think it's easy for them, because maybe they're six foot eight and they can reach the, the top is the highest box on the shelf. When a five foot person comes around and tries to lift it, it's not that easy even though it should look there and look smart or whatever, it's not the same. So keeping it easy and simple for everyone is a neutral ground. And maybe some people don't actually realise that, that they're taking it too far. Yeah, 100%. Um, interesting you brought that up. It reminded me of one of Jocko's podcasts. He talks about how in the military um, they have something called Standard Operating Procedures, SOPs. Yeah. Um, we have it in... We try... We don't have it at high tech. I think we need, do need it at the, at the team. don't know if we've... Have we announced what team it is? Beep! <laughs> yeah, um, I think we definitely need it. It will help out with our entire team. But um, they have it at places like Mercedes. Yeah, the boys are telling me. Um, and what it does, it just eliminates faffing, getting it wrong. So he told a story about how 
um, when they first went out to Afghanistan, they they had to uh, they have these trucks that they all travel in, and um, one of them got attacked. There was there was some they had they got shot at, you know, fired at. Um, so the first time they all bailed out and then started uh, making an attack, defending you know defending themselves. It took them about three four minutes so everyone to jump out of this truck, get armed up, and then start doing the job they needed to do. Um, so immediately they go, right, we need a standard operating procedure of just getting out of a truck yeah. and getting ready. And they went from three minutes to something like 45 seconds. And then from, as opposed to the first person just jumping out and then someone chucking them a gun, they'd, they'd handled it in a way that that person's ready to go. He's on a defensive route somewhere. He's another one, another one, another one, like person after person has a role. And they're working as a team to do this. And they got it down to like 45 seconds, yeah. which has saved lives and is an awesome. It's incredible. And and now that's just standard. It's like they do that f- throughout their their units. That is the way to do it. So anyone doesn't matter what rank you are, that's how it's done. It's the most effective, most efficient way. There's no question. Everybody in the team knows it. Everybody in the squad knows it. Um, you do it without thinking about it. Now it's, it's become second nature, and that that's when you gain so much time and so much efficiency. Um, because it's simple. It works. Yeah, you know the Standard operating procedures are simple, and that's when they work their best. And I think people do that in day to day life as well. I think a lot of people, um, you know, going from a, if you're talking about a, a team or you know you work for a, a big company or an organization or some of that, if you all buy into one idea that a manager set out and you all think it's a great idea and it works well and you know it works well and you have no other information to give or no criticism to give, everyone buying into it also helps the idea because mm. everyone buys into it it'll become second nature as you said it, it becomes easy it's when you get different opinions from different people is when it starts to struggle um, now again we're talking about a team work at the moment when it's it's you you know if you're becoming a trader an investor it's a lonely game um, because it's more retail for instance starting off with anyway you buy yourself you know, and there's only one way that you can do it, and that's your way because it's the only way you can dream of. Yes. But having a community, finding a success community out there to help you, you know, find different ways of doing things and, and give you tips and tricks is is just a, a, a massive game winner. Um, so, you know, don't think that you have to be stuck in this one process. There is other ways that you can do things. Very true. Yeah. You do have to adapt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, again, well, I think we spoke about it before. COVID's messed up a lot of businesses, but the ones that have adapted are going to throw up. So exactly. yeah. adapt and overcome. Yeah, exactly. So while I do, yeah, whilst you do need something set in stone within reason, yeah, you do need to be able to adapt at the same time. Yeah. Uh, another another little tip I'd like to say as well um, is small changes. Mm. Now, yes, as you said, then then like the um, SOPs mm. having a, having a change, working on something. Uh, okay, if we get our guns out once we're out of the vehicle versus we're getting our guns out as we go out the vehicle, if we save time there, then we're going to do that. And that's just an, in- an incremental change. But if that saves them a minute, well, that's massive. But it's a small change, you know. It's one task that they've done. Yeah. But that one task has saved them a minute. Even though that's a very, very small incremental change, you do that over a period of six months, you know, you're getting your time down from four, four, three minutes to 2.30, two, one thirty, one forty-five uh, seconds. Then you know you're going to find these small incremental increases and changes, and that is going to equal into one big change. And as as, it, as you said, it did. They had three, four minute time of getting everyone out, getting armed up, getting ready to go, and they've decreased it to forty-five seconds because these incremental changes that the the managers and the leaders and the you know the uh, the other soldiers put into place yeah. worked well, and yeah, they've kept them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I like to think of uh, time as money in that situation. Like you know, you're always trying to save money each month. You you kick out the Netflix, you know, subscriptions. You kick out all the the, the waste, money, the coffees and the McDonald's and all that. Um, if you think of it, as your time as money. So you save that minute here, save that minute there. You've got a big chunk of time, and you have, yeah, you can do better stuff with that time. You know, time is invaluable, yeah. priceless. One thing I've talking about time, I've actually changed my schedule a little bit. And for instance, when I used to get home from work on my day to day routine. I would wait for 7.30 to come around before I started work because yeah. that is the lot of time I've given myself. 
if I get home and there's a, a mishap, um, I didn't get chicken out the fridge or something. I need to go and get some chicken from the from the shop because I didn't get out the freezer, for instance. Um, so I go to get that, and but I still have twenty minutes before I start work. I will now purposely start work early. If I have twenty minutes in a car journey to do some notes, um, podcast ideas, I will do that in twenty minutes rather than sitting on my phone and filling my time up with social media. I will I will work wherever I can to gain more time. Where I use I used to just sit there and wait until the time to set the seven thirty you know clicks over and then I go to work or okay. the the clock reaches my time to go to work I'll go to work or I have to wait until my allotted time to do work. If I have spare time now, I will go and do work if I'm not doing anything else. And just those again small changes, it's an incremental change, but over the course of a month. Those 20 minutes will add up to an hour, two hours, three hours. So it's just another step to yeah. increase. So are you, so you're not moving your whole pattern, your whole schedule forward. You're just adding that 20 minutes. You've gained, it's a bonus 20 minutes you're taking exactly. advantage of. The whole routine is exactly the same. Okay. However, if I get home and the dog's already been walked and the dinner's already made and I've already showered and I've done that in an hour rather than an hour and a half, the half an hour is bonus time. So I just go and do it. Or for instance, say, we're getting a takeaway. Um, I don't have to cook. I don't have to clean. I don't have to wash up. I'll wait for that takeaway to arrive. I'll get on work. I'll smash it out. 20 minutes. It turns up. Then I go and do the rest of the route, yeah. eat, and then change. Or if we're going in the van, for instance, going somewhere, I'll pop my laptop out. I'll do what I can on the move. Trading's a bit hard on the move because there's a lot of jumps and bumps and you can't really get the price in the correct sort of area that you need to yeah, be. Yeah, you need to move trigger. Yeah. But you, you can do the the ideas for the podcast. You can do the ideas for your for your trade plan and, and so on and making spreadsheets. And it's just that 20 minutes that you never get it makes a big change. I had an old boss when I worked in Bedford, in the Bedford area, um, who had a driver who drove him everywhere. Had a lovely Audi A6, really nice. But he always got, drove everywhere by his driver. No, I, I, he wasn't horrendously rich. He was only the manager of this this company. He wasn't the owner, um, but when you when you realise why he was always working, like that guy did not switch off. He was constantly. If he he found his, he lived quite away, far away, so he had an hour or so every day, and that's when he was getting work done. He wasn't waiting to get to work to work. He wasn't waiting to get to the office. He was working as soon as he was in the car. Yeah, and that was like quite impressive. In fact, one time we were off to Spa. He drove because I think at this point he drive was available. I don't know for some reason he was driving. I was in co pilot seat. And we're, we took the uh, channel tunnel, drove for it, drove for it on the train. Um, and I just remember as soon as we got in the train, as soon as we parked up, laptops out, working away, working away. I had no idea what he was doing, but working away to the point where we were on the motorway in France. His laptop was still out, <laughs> <laughs> just finishing off like emails or whatever he was doing. It was terrifying. And as soon as he'd done it, he was just sort of a flick onto my lap. Oh, cheers, man. Just look that. Sorry, cheers. But <laughs> down the road because he, he was on the mission because he knew he had to get to the next destination to carry on doing the work. Yeah. So it's sort of like that in a way, isn't it? You're it taking is. advantage of every little, I mean, it's staying focused. I bet that helps stay focused. It's 100%. It? 100%. Yeah. One thing I found quite interesting the other day and I thought about this and I was driving to work and everyone was rushing to get to work. Everyone was driving fast as balls, you know, everyone's rushing to get to work. But on the way home, no one, no one rushes. I do. No. <laughs> but a lot of, yeah, we do, but a lot of other people don't. People who are late in the morning, rush their nuts to get to work on time. But when it's their time, they don't rush. Yeah. That's when traffic builds up because people aren't rushing. In the morning, everyone's like, I've got to get to work, I've got to get to work. They're flat everywhere, you know, they're, 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 they're late of the mill. Yeah. yeah, they need to get to work on time, yeah. otherwise the boss is going to give them rubbish. But on the way home, no, no one gets, you know, they, they just dilly dally around. And it, it really surprises me because it's your time and you're wasting it. But you don't ever rush to work. Yeah. But you know, you, you sorry, you rush to work, but you never rush to get home. And I'm the opposite. I don't rush to get to work. I leave and I try to get there for 8.30. If it don't happen to work. Yeah, it's right. not a problem for me. I mean, <laughs> I'll sit in the coffee room and I'll fill my walk bottle up and I'll walk down at, at 20 to 9. Oh, where have you been? Oh, I've been busy filling up my water bottle. Thank you very much. <laughs> you dehydrate and, and die. No, you don't. You want me to be working, don't you? So, you know, whereas as soon as that, that clock switches, bam, I'm out that door and I'm flat. Because I want to get home and I've got work to do. Yeah. All right. Just yeah. another little nugget for everyone to think. Just if you are starting a business, 
don't rush to work, rush from work. Rush home to work, to, on, you. To work on your side hustle yeah. or your, your business. Yeah. Don't rush to work for someone else. That's going to be more important. That should, that should be more valuable, more, give you more value or make you feel better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it will. Then stressing getting to work because you're going to be two, three minutes late and someone's going to give you some rubbish and, you know, the only person who can give you your own rubbish when it's in your time is you. So really be harsh on yourself in that. Yeah. Another little um, thing is removing unnecessary tasks and objectives objectives from your life. I think we spoke about this before. Mm. Um, and it's, again, it's, it's like driving to work. You, you don't need that urge to drive to work fast. It's unnecessary. Listen to the podcast. If you walk into work and you're one minute late, but you've completed what you need to do on your way to work. I've, yeah, I've done that a few times. Podcast is getting juicy. I'm listening to, and it's got some value, like pouring out of it. And I've sat in the car park, just waiting for it to finish. Or get it finishing that, that bit point. that I wanted to listen yeah. to. You know, I wanted to get it from it. That's what I think we've said in the past. Do something for you in the morning, whether it's a workout, meditation. Do something for you before you go and work for your boss. Yeah, and do something for all for them because yeah, that exactly. is what you do. Yeah, unfortunately, 100%. at the end of the day. So yeah, I believe in that. 100. Keep you. Another, and, and another again, uh, an abbrev- is it abbreviation? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not smart with words. I'm a bit dyslexic. But another little thing I like to use is kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Yep. Keep it simple. It's some one thing I always say. I think I learned it from actually Slabbard. Ah. Yeah. One thing that he taught me, and uh, I was saying, I was saying to Slab, I was like, oh, I'm really struggling with my trading plan. You know, I keep adapting it, and it's not working, and I keep putting more filters in and adapting what I'm trying to do and, and price entry and different candles and, and so on and so forth and it just wasn't working and he just said well maybe not over kiss I mean what do you mean kiss he goes keep it simple stupid I was like oh well, yeah well it worked when like, it was when I was first starting off so why should I try and add all these things to make it that little better or that 99% it's never going to be the best thing it's ever going to be you know and eventually it started to work so Sim- simplicity he does work because it, because it frees up your mind. It frees up your mind to think about other things as opposed to processes or anything like that. Anything you can think of, it will free up your mind. Yeah. You won't have to think about what you're doing in as much detail or as if you're doing it the right order or anything like that. It will free up your mind to be able to think clearer, faster, just more efficiently in every way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why simplicity is key. Yeah. Huge companies... Huge companies. Some of the biggest companies in the world are stupid simple, really. Apple. How much has the it, Apple iPhone really changed? Yeah, exactly. Think about it. How simple. They, back in Deer, when did the iPhone come out? Years ago, wasn't it? It was years ago. Two, the Apple iPhone, was it the three? Was the first one with like full touch screen? Or was it had the home button, didn't it? I can't. Nah, Why don't you know, Luke? No, nah, it was just the Apple iPhone. Was it the first? The, the, the first one that had touched the touch thing. Yeah. Motorola, Sony Ericsson. Uh, who else made phones back then? I'm forgetting all the Samsung. brands. Samsung. They all had buttons. They all had that 10 buttons at the bottom with, uh, you know, just... Weird, <laughs> messy, noisy. Yeah, yeah, all of that. And Apple has gone, don't like that. Let's just take all the buttons away. I have two buttons on the sides, maybe a couple of volume ones, but no buttons on the main screen. And it took off like... like what phone isn't like that now? Exactly. There's, everyone's copied it. Yeah. Same with just the name of the brands. iPhone, iTunes, iPad. Like how yeah. basic is that? They don't even put it in capitals. No. That's how lazy. That's how simple it is. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it just works, and they've taken over the world with it. All right. The, you could argue that the inside of it is all complicated and all that, but I bet you it's not. But if you delve deep, it is quite simple. The, the things that every everyday people use: text messages phone calls, internet, social media, if you really have to, is all the bare basics of what it was back then it was an iPhone 4. What, look at all the successful apps we've had over the years. Did you ever, Angry Birds? Yeah. How simple was that? Yeah. You just swipe your finger once and it was like a movie. You just watch it after that. Yeah, exactly. Same with Doodle Jump. Did you ever play Doodle Jump? Yeah, that's a good Just tilt the phone. Flappy Bird as well. Flappy Bird. All the huge success. Simple. Yeah. Because we like simple. It works. It's just, it's the way forward. Kiss. Keep it simple, Simon. Like Simon, <laughs> why have you changed it twice? It can be Simon, it can be stupid. Whatever you want. <laughs> if you call it, if you, you know, a stupid Simon. 
But then so that's, I've, that's kiss. Is that sh- when I heard it, I, was out and <laughs> I knew I heard it as keep it stupid simple. Okay. Like as in so anyone could do it. But e- either way works. Either way works. But yeah. I quite like I quite like keep it simple, stupid. Or keep it simple, some stupid. Yeah. We should get slapped there on the mic. <laughs> um what ways do you keep things simple? Do you have any ways of like, oh, I've overcomplicated it? Do oh, you yeah. Go back? You don't oh, yeah. Go back. When I first started like analyzing companies, I did overcomplicate it. And I've drawn it back slightly because I still like to know a lot about them. But maybe I don't need to go into certain areas as much. I sort of. Yeah, I, I need to. I have toned that down over the. Over the time i've been learning um and i sort of not not very regularly because i feel like i'm running quite simply at the minute because i'm a very simple person but um every now and then i'll look at what i'm doing and just go is this put me in is this am i taking the right steps forward is my process is working is it all flowing have you heard the terminology lean your ladder up against the right wall yeah so you lean the ladder up against the wall you climb the ladder of your career you get to the top of the ladder and suddenly you realise, oh, this isn't the wall I wanted to be at the top of. The my, my wall's over there something. I want to be on that ladder. Um, ben Bergeron uses that quite a lot and I love it. I think it's great because you do find a lot of people leaning their ladder on the wrong point. But I'm thinking mini ladders on mini walls for all of my processes and so on. Is this ladder leading me to where I want to be? And so that's how I keep it simple. I just review it like that. Yeah. And if it's, if it's not where I want to be, it's probably because... I've messed up. I've overcomplicated it. I've lost track of where I wanted to go. And that's... that's yeah. How often do you review? Every six months? Yeah. Yeah, every six months. I think it used to be more often. Every quarter, I'd go through everything. <laughs> every quarter, I'd go through everything. But uh, yeah, every three months, I'd, I used to have a review. But I've got to a point where now... I'm happy with it. I'm really quite keen on it. It's working well, so I'm not going to touch it for a bit. Okay. Again, keeping it simple in the fact that I don't need to overanalyze analyze what I'm doing. Yeah. So every six months. And yeah. Okay. What about yourself? Yeah, I'm the same. Um, at the moment, you know, I'm still back testing, and it's a slow process. Mm. It is a slow process. It's a long process because at the end of the day, it's a business, and I want the business to be right. So I want to get everything right, and doing it every quarter half a year is better because I then have something to talk about mm. I'm doing it every quarter yeah I have stuff to think about and talk about because of the different pairs and this one's rubbish and this one's good but at the same time I'm not really making much difference and when I look at that that depresses me a little bit because I can't see the amount of work getting done okay as good yeah if it's on the sixth month bam I've got You've four got a lot pages more. Yeah, yeah I can review what I've done and I, I, I can see I've been working <laughs> Further on the quarter, uh, I've got three months work here, and it's you know it's not very big and it's a bit depressing. So I, I like to do it. exactly yeah. when it becomes more frequent and I'm doing it full time because of the challenges and the changes that are going to be happening. Quarters are going to be what I need to do, but because at the moment I'm not doing it full time and it's not so prominent in my life at this moment in time. Six months is where I want to be. Yeah, for me personally. No, it work, yeah, same as me. Works out quite well. Exactly. Especially, yeah, I suppose as we as, when we do get onto full time, you're getting a lot more work done in that time. 100%. So you do need to review it more often. More things well. coming out, you left, right, and centre, and you're just sort of changing ideas. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay, interesting. Uh, have you got anything else to talk about, Basin? That's pretty good. Huh? Oh, yeah, that was good. Uh, before we do go, how was your week overall in your working? Obviously, you've had a nice little relaxed week. Week off, yeah. I've been pushing, pushing reasonably hard. Um, I say it was a good week. Not yeah. perfect week, um, to be fair. Far off perfect week. Um, it's tough getting back into my training. And I normally find that affects my mindset more than anything. Okay. Um, working out, you mean? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, doing the CrossFit and stuff. Um, I've had a few distractions as well, which I've probably I've let myself be distracted by. Um, but other than that, not a bad week. Good. What about yourself? Yeah. To be honest with you, um, I know I've been away and. Oh, yeah. Um, I've actually got a lot done. Nice. I've been pushing myself to do work in the evenings um, with, again, the, the spare time. If you've got 20 minutes before we go for dinner, 
I will do 20 minutes work. Epic. And my roommate now, um, I can't stand the kid, unfortunately, but I will just happily do work in front of him because I don't, I don't care what, what he's thinking of me or, or you know, what he's, he's not going to ask me questions because I've got my earphones on. So I'm just fully immersed in what I'm doing. And when the time comes, I'll go out. Epic. Love that. So that's cool. That's, we need more of that in the world. We people do. should take that sort of mindset on. Don't worry about what other people are thinking. Do it for you. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they're not going to do anything for you. No, exactly. In the long run, they're not going to be there when you're a millionaire, are they? So that's awesome. Good place to stop as well. On that note, thanks for listening, guys. Appreciate it. Another good episode, episode 20. As we said, you know, we're well past episode seven now. We're 95% in the uh, the podcast people of uh, Complete Podcasts. And uh, even though it might seem like a small achievement, it's an achievement in any way. So don't forget to go and follow us on Instagram uh, at underscore finding success underscore. Send us some messages. Let us know what you want to hear. Uh, if you've got any questions, send them in. Go back to episode one. Don't forget, give us a listen. Um, and if you've got any questions, please let us know. Review, like, subscribe on our YouTube channel. We're on all the standard social media platforms. Uh, but for now, guys, I will leave you with our standard perfect message. Take care. Success is available for everyone, so why should you settle for less?